Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Gulfstream Park here on Pegasus Preview Day. It is Saturday, the 30th of December, 2023. Going to look at the stakes action on the program from Gulfstream. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. And I mean it around the world. Let's look at the stakes action here from Gulfstream. We're, we're going to be looking at races 5, 8, 10 and 11 so 5 8 10 11 let's get to it right now here on pegasus preview day um the fifth race it is rampart stakes going for a purse under twenty five thousand dollars race for phillies mayors three rolls and upwards we have a field here of six horses contesting the distance of ground of 1600 meters or the one turn mile on the on the Gulfstream main track, I'm going to say Belmont for some reason, but uh, good thing I didn't. My top selection, I'm going to go with the two-horse unifying. I'm going to go 2463 in the Superfecta. 2463 Super, top selection, two-horse unifying. They're affiliated by uh, Union Rags. Riley Mott trains. I rather tease Junior gets the mounts. The horse's most recent out came to Leslie's Lady at Ellis. Seven frongs in the slop at the 11th of June. And he won by three lengths that day. And he sat back early. He was a little bit wide. But when he got to leave the top lane, that's where the, the speed bias was really, you know, to the advantage. He took off clear and, and put on a show that day. Maybe the race took a lot out of him. You haven't seen him since mid-June. But coming here today, back to a mile trip... He's run decent buyers that could definitely win. I'm going to give this horse Sean the ticket. If you go by the workout pattern, this horse is clearly ready to run. Two back at Oakland on the 5th of Mar uh, May. Six furlongs off to 100 claimer. The horse went by one quarter lengths that day. And again, he sat back early. Had a little traffic around the turn. But he had the turn to foot to win. 82 buyer. Not a bad race for him there. And then mid-April, uh, mid excuse me, at Oakland. Six furlongs and, lock, and uh, off to 100. He finished third by four and a quarter lengths that day. He was very wide that day. And just kind of, you know... He, he needed something more. He was gaining, but it wasn't anything spectacularly um, gaining there. And then uh, in a launch race over the six frongs in mid-March, he uh, finished second by one quarter lengths that day. Again, really closed up well. He needed something more, but he ran his heart out. If there's a pace meltdown, he could win. I'll use him on the ticket at four to one, at seven to two. I think the four horse here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on Nerona. I, I'm Monrona. I'm Monrona. Can't speak, Parm. I've been up since like 3 a.m. It's been crazy. Uh, but the uh, five horse, I'm, I'm, I'm Monra. There we go. Um... <laughs> Right, it's been one of those weeks, trust me. I don't want to go into it. Uh, but this 4 3 will fill it by violence. Safi Joseph Jr. trains Edgar's eyes, gets the mounts. Horse hasn't been seen since the Cotillion, which they ran uh, during the Great Flood of 2023, it seems, uh, which seems like it happens every other week here in New York City. But uh, Mile 16th at Parks uh, in the Cotillion, he beat nobody home. Finished ninth by 38 lengths, was wide, and just wasn't getting into it. The form was going backwards. They shouldn't have ran her that day. Prior to that, in the, uh, in the um. Church, uh, Charlestown Oaks at Charlestown, seven furlongs on a probably wet fast, but um, probably fast track at uh, Charlestown in, in late August. He finished six by ten and a quarter lengths that day and didn't break that day and just wasn't handling the quirkiness of Charlestown. It wasn't his day to win. And then the Iowa Oaks at Prairie over the mile 16th, he finished second by two lengths that day. He stalked all the way around the race course, but I, I just think this horse wants to go one turn mile. He's back to it today, back to the home base where this horse really likes running. He could win. The most recent race locally on the mud on the 26th of March and off 75 over this one turn mile. He won by two and a quarter lengths that day and he took off driving. Very, very good run. Training well since the last race, five eights and 59 and two. I'll give this horse Sean the um, the multi race ticket. But to recount my selection for the fifth from Goldstream now, it's the Rampart. Going to take the two horse unifying. Give good o's to the four horse I'm on Ra. Pardon me, like I said, I can't speak. 2463 Super, 2 4 in the multi race. So we're going to head over now to race. Who are we? To race number eight from Goldstream Park. It is the Shawnee River Stakes. It's a great three event going for a purse of $150,000. Race Phillies Mayors, three rolls and upwards. We have a field of 10 horses going 1,600 meters or a mile on the Goldstream Park turf course. Rails are at 66 feet today. If they run this race on uh, turf, um, they've been getting a lot of rain at Goldstream this past month and especially this week. They haven't been on the turf since, um, I want to say since last Saturday, uh, but or uh, last Sunday if I'm not mistaken. But um, if this race is run on the turf uh, and these uh, scheduled turf races are run on the turf today, the races will be actually um, run on uh, two different kinds of turf courses with the rail settings. There's going to be a 10 um, feet inner turf course and a 66 feet outer turf course so now with the first time with this new kind of turf course at Goldstream we get, get, get to see how these turf course plays out with the uh, the wide rails and the low rails uh, but my top selection here I'm going to take the one horse Saffron Moon I'm going to go 1479 in the Superfecta 
one four seven nine super top selection one horse saffron moon four year filled by Malibu moon Chad Brown trains Tyler Gaff Leone gets to mount the horse's most recent out of game the grade three cardinal at, Char at uh, Churchill mount the eighth on the 23rd of November and he finished second by 10 lengths star fortress on that quirky tor course took off clear this horse just wasn't catching him a lot of horses weren't handling the course that was after they didn't run uh, Churchill for like 10 days and they finally scheduled a turf race on uh, Derby on uh, Thanksgiving week. And then after that race, they canceled all the turf racing. That's because nobody was handling it. All the jockeys were slipping around. It was just the quirkiness of the course. Put an extra that race. Prior to that allowance race at Keeneland, a mile 16th in mid October, he went by two and a quarter lengths that day. And he stalked. He really quickened up nicely, a little bit wide, but he got the job done. A nice 8 9 buy for him that day. And then option 25 at the spa, a mile on the inner turf course, off the um, bench since Christmas. Christmas Eve. He uh, finished fourth by one quarter lengths that day. He was a little bit wide. He moved a little bit late, but, you know, he's just a little bit flat also. He just, you know, might have needed the race there. Um, definitely needed the race because he won next start out quite easily. And then on Christmas Eve at Tampa off the six-month refreshing, a mile on the lounge race, 25,000. Went by four and a quarter lengths. A little bit wide, but again, he really took off clear. A very, very nice run. It's actually a, a decent horse early on in her two-year-old campaign. Actually ran against Nest uh, in a main special way where she broke her maiden. This horse actually didn't um, finished the race. He lost um, Manny Franco out of the gate, so what can you do? But uh, coming here today, you know, decent buyers as of recently, she could definitely win. I think the four horse, uh, full count Felicia for Brittany Russell and Irad could win also. Most recently, the Golden Cove or the Mile at Santa Anita, she um, finished fourth by three lengths that day, and she was just, she wanted to go. Simon Russell didn't let, let her go, and she just wasn't getting into it. Prior to that, she ran terrifically at Pimlico over the mile and eighth in the all long, went by eight and a half lengths that day. They almost walked the dog that day, and she took off clear on the front end all throughout. Um, and then an option 50 at Colonial over the mile. 16th first start of the season she won by two and a quarter likes again a little bit wide but again she flew home late training well locally she could definitely win the Brittany Russell horses you know she's had only four stars so far here in South Florida but this season they've been running quite quite nicely 26% so keep an eye on this one even the seven horse here uh, would like you for um, Grand Motion and Johnny V um, you know hasn't seen the winter circle in a little bit but has run these good races as as she's been getting up in class but just not winning but you know her day will come I'll give her a shot at 6 to 1 you know if she runs a race like she ran at Colonial in July. She could definitely win here. But to recount my selection for the 8th from Goldstream now, it's a Shawnee River. Going to take the 1-horse Saffron Moon. Give kudos to the 4-horse four, the four Full Count Felicia and the 7-horse at Wallachia. 1-4-7-9 uh, Super. 1-4-7 in the multi-race. The co-feature 10th race now from Goldstream Park. It is the Harlan's Holiday Stakes. It's a grade 3 event going for $150,000 purse. Races for 3-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 12 horses. Excuse me, 11 horses going the distance of ground to 1,700 meters or mile 16th here in the Harlan's Holiday. Um, here's actually a quirky fact. Uh, when Goldstream started carring these mile 16th races again after the renovation post-2004 or five, when I think it was 2000. Five, they put the new track in, um, or was the first year of the new track. They didn't card mile sixteenth races for about five, six years, uh, and then when they finally did, and I think uh, twenty eleven, uh, this was actually the first race they ran at Gulfstream Park at a mile sixteenth on dirt in like seven, eight years. Uh, and if you don't believe me, Google it or you know look it up in the uh, in the analytics because uh, I think I'm pretty right. Uh, but um, that's your fact of the day. Uh, but my top selection here, I'm gonna go with the nine horse gasoline. I'm gonna go nine three one six in the super facta. 9316 Super, Top Slicks, 9 Horse Gasoline, Boro Gelding by Curling, Top Pletcher Trains, IRITs Jr. gets the mount. Horses most recent out and came in the Clark Handicap for Stakes at Churchill, Mount Nathan, on the 24th of November, and he just finished fifth by eight and a quarter lengths that day. Setting their heights too high, he was wide, and he just never really was into it. He's down in class, not the world's toughest grade three. You know, from wide poster, he's probably going to leave to get good position. You know, if he could save some more ground around the second turn, he has a live chance to win. You know, he's run good races this year. Two back, he ran terrifically in early November at Churchill, Mount 16th and optional 100, went by five and a quarter lengths that day. He stalked that day. He was a little bit wide, but he had the turn of foot to win. A very nice run. Third place venture war campaign is actually a decent horse. It was the next star winner there. And then in mid-September, Churchill, mile 16th and optional 80. Off the long refreshing, he won by a neck that day. And again, a little bit wide, but he really, again, took off clear. His races over the winter at Aqueduct, you know, weren't bad. He actually won once over three offerings last season at Aqueduct. Most recent race locally at Aqueduct on the 19th of um. 
February over the mile three three sixteenths in a lounge race. He uh, finished third by one three quarter lengths, and they tried walking him on the finish uh, on the uh, the front end. He kind of out finished late, but he ran his heart out that day. And then early January on the slap over the mile three sixteenths in a lounge race, went by a half length on the front end all throughout. He gamed it out to the wire. Very very good run. Nearly getting beat by Tonal Impact, who's been a decent horse in the Naira Circuit this year. He's training well since the last race. Uh, getting I rat up. I'll give him a shot here on the ticket. I think his second likeliest winner here is the three horse Grand. Aspen for Jose Ortiz and Tom, uh, and, um, Tom Pletcher. Most recently in the um, in a lounge race at Churchill of the mile length off the turf. He won by three and a quarter lengths that day and he had a very wide trip but he really took off clear. A very nice strong one. Uh, finally coming back with a 94 buyer. They took him to Keeneland prior to that in a lounge race for 110,000 where he finished third by neck and again it took him a little bit time to get going with the short stretch. He just missed but he, again he ran his heart out there and then on the, on the turf at, at uh, Kentucky Downs a mile on a lounge race he finished second by neck first time winners he just was you know he he just wasn't uh, you know so happy with the race but again he, he ran his heart out but i think back to dirt really been improving that's logical step of stakes quality horses he could win let's use him in the slate pick four but to recount my selection for the 10th from goldstream now it's to harlan's holiday the great three harlan's holiday gonna take the nine horse gasoline give kudos to the three horse Ren Aspen. Let's see, where are we? <laughs> 9316 Super, 93 um, in the multi race. Let's get to the featured 11th race now from Goldstream, the nightcap on the Saturday program, the final Saturday program of the year from Goldstream. Uh, the 11th race, it is the Fort Lauderdale Stakes. It's a grade two event going for a $200,000 purse. Race for three year olds and upwards. We have a field of 10 horses going 1,800 meters or a mile and eighth in the Fort Lauderdale. I'm going to take the number nine horse here, Running B, as a top selection. 9724 in the Super Factor for me. 9724 Super. Top selection, nine horse, uh, Running B. This th four year old Colt by, um, uh, four year old Colt by English Channel. Chad Brown trains. I ride T's Jr. gets the mounds. The horse in most recent outing came in mid November at Aqueduct. Mile 16th in the outer turf course and option 62. And the horse went by three and three quarter lengths that day. Off the about 13 month refreshing wasn't a problem. He had a wide trip that day, but he left out of the gate to get good position. And there was no stopping him. 96 by off the bench. Very good run. Back to stakes, quality horses. Going to have to overcome a wide trip, but I think he's really, you know, a, a real deal kind of horse that can get a good trip to win. Two back in the lounge race at Keenan, a mile eighth in mid-October. He won by five and a quarter lengths that day, and he, he, again, on the front and all throughout, they definitely walked him to 116 and three quarters. You're basically crawling to the three quarters, and you're basically going to win over that kind of race. And he did just that. He, he took off clear a very nice run in the, in the fall of 2022, and then in the September 2022 at Kentucky Downs, mile 5, 16th in the Dueling Ground Derby. He finished ninth by 11 and a quarter lengths that day, and he just kind of hit the wall that day. I thought they were asking too much too soon. And also, it's that quirky Kentucky Downs course that you either like or hate. He definitely hated it there. Um, and then mid-August at Saratoga, mile 316 in the main specialty. He won by three and three quarter lengths that day. And he had a little traffic that day. But he came home clear. Training well. Decent race off the bench last time out. Kika win. The seven horse Stone Age is a head scratcher. He had ability in the UK uh, or in Europe. But his race is stateside. I've just, I've just been... Horrible. This four um, Colts by Galileo, Chad Brown trains, John Velasquez gets the mount. Most recently in the uh, Joe Hirsch Turf Classic, I'll give him the break that day. It was a very boggy course, and he finished fifth by the seven and a quarter lengths that day. He was wide, and nobody's catching war like Goddess that day. Prior to the sword dance over the mile and a half on a yielding course at the spot, he finished fifth by 11 and a half lengths, and again, he just kind of yielded late. Maybe he needed the race there. And then in Doha, he just had nothing. Um, his last great race was actually in the Bridge Cup Turf of 2020. Too. It probably was the, the, the weakest Breeze Cup turf we ever had, but he finished second by two and a quarter lengths that day, really closing up well late. But Rebels Romance had the jump on him. Uh, most recent victory, you have to go all the way back to early 2022 when, when he was on the. Um, English Derby prep uh, trail where he won a couple preps. Came back to run in the English Derby of 2022 where he finished 6 by 10 quarter lengths, never really showing up. Came back to run in the Belmont Derby where he actually finished a good third place, finished by 3 quarters length behind Classic Causeway, um, and then came back to run in Saratoga horribly and not so well in the Irish Champions. But he has abilities, a beautifully bred horse here. I'm going to give him a shot on the ticket. Blinkers on. That might be uh, that might concentrate him. I also think the um, the, the number 2 horse, Grand Sonota, for top player 
Fletcher and Tyler Gaffleyon could get a trip to win. Was a winner three back in optional 80 at Saratoga over the bat mile in the eighth. Winning by a neck from a tracking trip. He came home clear. They ran him in the turf classic at Aqueduct after that over the mile and a half on a very boggy outer turf course where he finished six by seven quarter lengths, never getting into it. And the River City on a very boggy turf course with Churchill. I, he just was, again, I don't think he was getting a good handle of it. I think, you know, he's going to see a given this ground today, but ideally he would like to see a very quick ground. He's always run these good races. He's won once a season. I'll give him a shot on the ticket to end off the pick fours in this very wide open um, race. But to recap my selection for 11th from Goldstream, now it's to Fort Lauderdale, the great two Fort Lauderdale. Got to take the number nine horse, Running B. Give kudos to the, second ho- the seven horse, Stone Age, and the two horse, Grand Sonota. 9724 Super, 972 in the multi race. So good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5. Good luck, everybody.